Hey guys, I know it's a little early than normally when I walk, but wanted to just share something that um, I've been finding myself say a lot. Good morning, Brother Michael, via social, afternoon, via social media. Um, hey, Samuel. So come walk with me this morning, afternoon of what's today? The 27th, I think. So I know there's a lot going on, right? In our world, in our city, in our lives, in our country. There's so much going on. Tag, share, invite someone to join us. You will have whatever you say. Whatsoever you say, that's what you're going to get. So, as we take this walk together, it's still a COVID conversation. Um, we know what happened in New York. We know what happened in Minnesota, New York. The young lady, Amy Cooper, I don't know why her name sticks with me, <laughs> um, accused a black man. Hey, Terry. Thank you for sharing, Terry. I pre appreciate that. When you share, please let me know. Um, so, we know about Amy, who accused the gentleman and tried to get on the phone and lied to the police. Then we know about, Lord have mercy, brother Gregory Floyd, I believe is his first name. Um, I know his last name is Floyd. Huh, was murdered by the police. You know, I... I said this morning to the Lord, I said, hey, Tracy, I said, I didn't say, hey, Tracy, but <laughs> I said, Lord, I don't know if I want to scream, if I want to curse, or if I want to cry. Does anybody else feel like that? I don't know if I want to scream. I don't know if I want to curse or if I want to cry. And I'm not a curser. But lately, a couple of words that came out. Lord have mercy. Mm. So... Why did I title this, You Will Have What You Say? Hey, Sister Carolyn, you will have what you say. The reason I say that is because many of us, as I've posted things and other people have posted things, one of the things I've heard people say or read their comments was, they're going to get away with it, meaning the police in Minnesota, even after they were fired. The statement was, they're going to get away with it. You'll have what you say. They're not going to be prosecuted. They're not going to be charged. You'll have what you say. And so I did a couple of posts this morning because I couldn't sleep. I didn't sleep well. I won't say I couldn't sleep, but I didn't sleep well. Because I prayed a lot covering my brothers and my nephews and those in my life that I care about and I love that are males and black males in general and the frustration of this generation of millennials and Gen Z and you know I I did that post a couple of weeks ago about the five C's COVID cops um what was the other one confusion conspiracy and my quandary right so even though quandary doesn't start with a C <laughs> so I did all of that. Please share, invite someone, tag. When you share them, just let me know. Would love to thank you for that. Um, so I did that post and I said in that post that there are two things that are killing us. COVID and cops, good God almighty. And then we certainly are killing ourselves. But right now, we ain't talking about that. We talking about what the police did to this young man, brother, 46 years old, 46 years old. And I haven't really watched the video, guys. I I, I've watched, I started watching it and I, I couldn't finish it because I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to cry, if I want to curse or I want to scream. I don't know. And I'm not a person that gets frustrated. Uh, thank you, Sister Carolyn. I'm not a person that, for sharing, I, I, I'm not a person that gets frustrated. Don't, don't a lot, don't, a lot don't shake me. My, my mother used to tell me that coming up and 
That's just how God caught, cut me. But here lately, with all of this, I told y'all the other day, I, I had about a week or so in there that I was like, what am I feeling? And, and the cares of life, this, this inhumane treatment of people. And people don't care about how they treat each other. And the police who are sworn to protect and serve, they don't care. See, I was saying they're careless with our lives. They're not careless with our lives. Those who are bad police, they don't care about our lives. So they could care less about the lives of black men. Now, we know, and black young ladies, we know that um, all policemen are bad. I want to put that out there right now. We know that. I have some I'm friends with, associates with, um, not bad. We know that, black and white. And we know there are some rotten white ones and then some not so good black ones. We know that. But unfortunately, the ones who are rotten and who are bad, they make the ones who are good. They make them bad because we don't want nothing to do with them. We don't want to deal with them. So you, you will have what you say. I, I got, I'm going to keep coming back to that. Because we serve a God who calls things that are not as though they are. Isn't that something? That's the God that we serve, Rhonda. That's the God that we serve, Carolyn. That's the God that we serve, Brother Brown. That's the God that we serve, Brother Covington. This is the God that we serve who calls things that are not as though they are. And he said that faith... His word. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Despite the evidence that they keep trying to lie about, our faith is telling us, God. See, let me stop because I want to say this. I want you to get it, okay? When God allowed me to be over the intercessors at the streams. See, I used to. Not that I necessarily had to teach them how to pray because all of them, I think most of them came in already as intercessors. But one of the things I used to tell them, see, you got to learn how to pray like David. Get him. <laughs> the one who dug the ditch for me, make them fall in it. See, that's how you got to pray. David prayed prayers like break they jaw. That's how David prayed. So when I pray like that, I'm praying the word. I'm not, hey, glory. I'm not praying I'm not praying with ill intent. I'm not praying anything bad. That's the word. So it's not because we're so right or we're so perfect or we're so righteous that we can pray like that. It's because it's been an injustice. And when there's been an injustice, you can pray like that. I don't care how raggedy you are. <laughs> it don't even matter who that person was, who the injustice was, injustice was done against. If at that moment... They were not doing anything to deserve that. Then they lied, y'all. They lied and they said that that brother was resisting arrest. And then the video comes out. He wasn't resisting arrest. He was not resisting arrest. And on top of that, he was cuffed. When your knee was on his neck, when your knee was on his throat, he was cuffed. He was on his face. Why did you do that? Why do the lives of our black men not mean nothing? I mean, well, you know, you can, you know, we can say it's because they beast, it's because they bad, you know, it's because if they get it together and come together, there's a, there's a power that's in black men. Oh my God, that can move mountains. The Bible talks about, yeah, if you speak to this mountain and you tell it to move, you will have whatever you say. That's the power and that's the fear. But y'all going to stop trying to make our black men look like they the boogeyman. They ain't the boogeyman. Hey, Mary. Hey, Samantha. They ain't the boogeyman. Y'all going to stop trying to take them out because you're scared. So what I understand, there is a fear. And I'm going to say this because we know this is not all white people. We know this is not all police. But for those who, who have this mindset, right, there is a fear that they operate in. So you got to understand. So you know how to pray. There is a fear that they operate in, right? Racism, the foundation of racism is fear, okay? It's not really control, it's fear. It's fear of losing control so you don't like another race, okay? So there's fear. Then the anger that they have, right, against black people and other minorities and people of brown hue, their anger is rooted in fear. 
Now, black people are afraid. Hey, pastor, black people are afraid. They, but the limit, but our fear is based out of how we have been treated. So really, our, the root of what we're feeling, our anger, is different from their anger. Our anger is rooted and comes out of how they have treated us. Again, we ain't talking about all white people. We ain't talking about all um, policemen, right? There are people who are on team uh, Black Lives Matter, policemen and Caucasians. And the truth is we need more of you because that is what will move the mission. We understand that all, all lives matter. All lives matter. But right now, we talking about the black lives that continue to end up in the street. Unfortunately, dead, the blood is crying out, good God almighty, because of unjust treatment against our black men. And they're angry. And I'm not even a black man and I'm angry. I'm angry. That's why I said, God, do I scream? Excuse me, pastor. Do I curse or do I cry? And I think I've probably done all three. Because that was wrong. That was wrong. And it's so many times that we find ourselves saying, that was wrong. That didn't have to happen. That shouldn't have happened to that brother. That shouldn't have happened to that sister. It's wrong. So you will have what you say. So I'm encouraging us as a people to stop saying they're going to get away with it. To stop saying they're not going to be tried. To stop saying they're not going to be found guilty. Stop saying those things. What if we, and I put this on my post. I had two posts today that was quite long. But what if we started saying they're going to get arrested. They're going to be charged. They're going to go to trial. They're going to be found guilty. What if we start unifying around those words? Because if it was you, if it was you, and this happened to your family member, wouldn't you want people saying that? other than the negative and the pessimistic words. And I understand why those words can, you know, rumble up out of you because we've seen it so much. Hey, Sans. Hey, hey Anita. Um, we've seen it so much. But what if, what if, I'm just, I'm just saying, what if our words, more of the negative words that have been spoken have overpowered the positive words that are trying to go out there and have snuffed out the positive words. What if so many people saying what's not going to happen versus what will happen has snuffed out the movement in the hand of God? Well, just what, what if we, we say that about speak your car into existence, speak your house into existence. Call things that are not as though they are. We say that about material stuff, but what about this, these injustices? Can we do that? How about that? What you think? Maybe let's all rally around that. And when you hear somebody say it, I don't care if they 19 or if they 99. No, nah, my son, husband, wife, sis, bruh, whatever. Let's not talk like that. Because you would want, you would want somebody to be standing in agreement with you. And what if we did that as a people? But see, this is what frustration and anger does. It causes you to become negative. It causes you to become pessimistic. So that's what's created. And that's what you start communicating. But I want to encourage you to say, create a new thought. Watch your mouths, right? Let's watch our mouths and start saying, a different thought. They're not going to get away with this. Listen, the young man in Atlanta, of course, this young man in Minnesota, the sister in Kentucky, the young lady last year who was shot in her home in uh, Texas, that um, police officer was fired, but it hasn't gone to trial because it was in October. And then, you know, it takes a minute for it to get to trial and then COVID. But we're going to believe that that young lady who was minding her business in her home, will, he will be found guilty. The, the, the uh, what, and I've said this before, whether it's blue on black, white on black, or black on black, all of it needs to be dealt with. But right now, we're talking about blue on black. And so all of these instances that have happened just right here in 2020, 
N never mind the stuff that has happened years before. And some of those police officers, the majority of them, have gotten away with things. But maybe, maybe it's because of the energy. Because you do know words have energy. Words have life. Words create. Words form. Words build. Maybe it's the words that we as a community have put out there. So watch your mouth. You will have what you say. So I'm declaring, not only as I'm praying over my nephews and, and my nieces and again, those men in my lives, my brothers, all of these men who I'm asking God to cover and to keep in the blood of Jesus is with them and goodness and mercy follows them and their ministering angels go before them. That's how you got to cover them. That's how you got to cover them right now. You just can't assume that when they go out, I don't care if they six or 60, when they go out, it's going to be well. You can't assume that. Not in this day and time. So you got to declare it. You got to pray it. You got to speak it. You got to cover them. Good God Almighty. So every man that is listening to me right now, I cover you in the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover your going in and your coming out, your down rising and your getting up. Good God Almighty. I declare that goodness and mercy is going to follow you all the days of your life. You are hedged in on the right, the left, the front, the back. Hallelujah. God has got you. You in Jesus and Jesus is in God. Hallelujah. Good God, your ministering angels go before you. Goodness and mercy follows you. Hallelujah. You are protected and you are hedged in. And I declare that over my sisters. Hallelujah, who are to the sound of my voice. My blood sisters, my spiritual sisters. Good God Almighty. Glory to God. And see, what we don't realize, I think, is that when things like this happen, the good policemen, the ones who are trying to do the right thing, they get the scarlet letter, right? They get the mark. Yeah, they get it. And so because they get it, then people turn on them. And they the ones who are trying to help us for real. Now, I don't understand. I don't understand why the police officer stood there and let that police officer of 19 years. He has 19 years. He has 19 years. Amen, Brother Cornell. You know I love you. Good God Almighty. Yes, Pastor, you know I love you. Good God Almighty. Come lift him up. Lift up the man of God. Your brothers in the natural and the brothers in the spirit. I don't understand. Well, I do now because somebody told me. Why they stood there and let him do that. So what I was told was one of the police officers was a trainee. So he definitely wasn't going to step in and say nothing to the dude who had his knee on the brother's neck. But we got to speak up. My Caucasian brothers and sisters, as I, my vanilla Swiss almonds, my white chocolate, same father, different mother. Good God almighty. We need y'all. We need y'all in this. We need y'all to come alongside. We need y'all to speak up. We need y'all to say this is wrong. We don't treat people. Listen, I want to give you a comparison that I put on my Facebook page. There was a, the lady in New York. Her dog, she practically strangling that dog. Do you hear me? It's yelping and helping. And if it could talk, it could say, I can't breathe. You know it's the truth. If it could speak, that's what the dog would have said. Owner, Amy, I can't breathe. She pulling him around and doing all this. So I did a comparison. Not that I'm uh, comparing Brother Floyd to a dog. Absolutely not. But you have two on the same day. Two of God's creation. Both of them can't get their breath. One's yelling verbally. One's barking and yelping. Both of them are being handled by a, a, an authority figure that ain't giving them their breath, that ain't paying attention to what their needs are. Both of them, yeah. One of them gets to go home. One of them gets their release and their relief and they get to go home. One of them don't. Now what got me with this was that the shelter that the lady had gotten the dog from, they saw the video. Yeah, both made me upset. Now, I'm with you. They both made me upset. And animal lovers and animal rights activists, they probably ain't gonna like what I'm getting ready to say. But that black man's life is worth more than that dog. 
You know why? Because God created humans in his image, not animals. And I love my dog and I cried when he passed away and I probably mourned for weeks because I miss my cane. I miss him now. But a life, a life in God's eyes that he created in his image is what's important to God. That's what we are to value. But we will treat animals better than we treat humans. Not only in our own house, but definitely out here in these streets. And unfortunately, that's what we're seeing with these policemen. So, the shelter. The shelter made Amy give the dog back. Did y'all hear me? The shelter made Amy give the dog back until further investigation. Until they understood why she was handling that dog the way that she was handling it. She don't get it back. If their investigation finds you ain't worthy to have this life. So just like they took them policemen's badge and gun and said you fired, you don't get to operate in this position anymore. That's what the shelter did. Give us the leash. Give us the collar. Bring the dog back because you don't get to be an owner right now. Please tag. Please share. You don't get to be an owner right now because you don't know how to handle your authority. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You don't know how to handle your authority as a pet owner. You don't know how to handle your authority as a police officer. So, give me the badge. So, we're grateful. That's what the Minnesota mayor and I'm assuming the chief of police or somebody came together and said, give it up. You don't get no job. Well, you don't have no job over here. That's good. But that's just the beginning. We, like his family said, we want them arrested. We want them charged. We want them put in jail. We want them prosecuted. We want a trial. And we want that trial to find them guilty. So that's what I'm agreeing with, with his family. Now, I said it. I didn't watch all the video. I couldn't. I couldn't. But to know that this 46-year-old man is crying out for his mother, y'all. Oh, my God. Man. Man. He crying out for his mama. Now, they, their siblings said their mom just passed away a couple of years ago. Do I? Hey, glory. Hey, God. Do I scream? Oh, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Come on. So what do we do? What do we do as a people? How do we strategize? How do we help this Gen Z 20-somethings who angry and ready to fight and don't care? How do we help... How do we help the millennials who are strategists and help them come up with a strategy? It's a whole system. Hear me. It's a whole system you got to bring down. It's a whole system. Now, yes, yeah, call the judicial system. I get that. But that has levels to it. But this thing in police departments, something has to change. Something has to change. I don't care if it's Minnesota, Atlanta, Toboycan somewhere back in the woods, it has to change. Because every city ain't going to have a mayor like this mayor that says enough. You got to go. And they cannot be allowed to go over to the next county, the next city, or the next state and get another job. Something has to be done. Now, I was doing some research, and I looked up... Uh, you know, the first act, the first, first, first steps or whatever it was with the judicial system, with the POTUS that he and his son-in-law put in place. I want y'all to be informed. Though they let people out of jail, under that, not a penny, zero, zero. Can y'all see my hand? Not a penny has been released in that fund. So, listen, don't fall for the okie doke. Don't don't be come on. What did what did what did um what did Malcolm say? Don't be bamboozled. Uh, uh we we ain't falling for that. No, you not a penny has been released towards the first steps program. So how you gonna get to step two when you ain't done nothing with step one concerning uh the justice system? Okay, so that was for free. I wasn't even supposed to be talking about that. So watch what you say. That's my message for the day. I want us to remember we serve a God who can call things that are not as though they are. We serve a God who is able 
and willing, all he needs is for somebody in the earth to start speaking it and declaring it. If one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten, can you imagine what all of us saying the same thing? Listen, I'm sure I've talked about this before in my walks as you walk with me. I'm sure I've talked about this before. The Tower of Babel. The Bible says that God said, let us go down and confuse their language. He said, because they are one people saying the same thing about the same thing. He said, there's nothing they won't be able to do. So I don't care if that's in your marriage, in your family, in your business, in your church, in your ministry, in any social issue, in any community issue. If your team, if you are saying the same thing about the same thing and you're on one accord, God said, it ain't nothing you can't do. So that's what I want to leave you with. Watch your mouths. Watch what we say. Because we're going to have what we say. And we want all of these people. Minnesota. Atlanta. Wherever part it was in Georgia. Kentucky. Texas. We want all of those cases to be solved. To be prosecuted in the favor of the victim. With appropriate sentencing. Amen. Amen. That's what we're going to say and that's what we're going to believe. So I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for walking with me today. I pray you have a great rest of your week. A beautiful day. Go with Jesus. And know that Jesus is always with you. He's promised never to leave you and never to forsake you. Please share this with someone. Tag someone. Who needs to be encouraged? God's got this. He is not going to leave us. He knows. Listen. God is a God of justice. You do know that, right? God is a God of justice. Yeah, he's a God of justice. Now, why it may take so long for justice to come, why some people appear to get away with something and other people don't, God is a God of justice. I don't believe that any of those police officers in past cases who got off, right, who didn't get charged. Oh, God's got a charge against them. You took one of his lives for no reason, for no reason. Running. They're running from you. There's no threat. Their back is turned and you shoot them. There's no threat. Come on. No weapon. Not resisting arrest. Cuffed. Oh, all of that is injustice. And God is a God of justice. And he is going to get justice for his souls. Somebody could say, well, what if those people aren't believers? It don't matter. They're his creation. And he's going to get justice for his souls that have been unjustly murdered. Listen, listen, by someone in authority. (laughs) By someone in authority. Ah, someone in authority who's supposed to do the right thing, but they usurp their authority. They take their authority beyond the limits that they've been given. So, got to deal with them. You know, we just got to be patient and keep saying what we know to say. Keep believing God. Like I said, y'all better learn how to start praying like David. Mm. Yeah. Better start learning how to pray like him. So, I'm done. I love you. I pray God's blessing over your life and uh, your safety. Continue to go out and be safe. Wear your mask. Practice social distancing. Wash your hands. Wear your gloves if you need to in those spaces. And be encouraged. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord.